Hello guys, welcome back to another video discussion in strength of materials. But in this video, we will tackle on the most important or most fundamental topic in strength of materials that is the deformation of actually loaded members. So in the previous video, we talked about the relationship of stress and strain by a stress strain diagram. And we learned that in the first region in the stress strain diagram is that we have the linear region and in the linear region explains that the relationship of stress and strain is in linear form so therefore as our stress is increasing there is also also a constant increase in the strain and we also come up by looking at the stress strain diagram we come up with a relationship of stress and strain can be expressed as the stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain and this is what we called Hooke's law and we know that the stress is equal to P over A and the strain is the deformation over the length so we could come up with a deformation formula that is the deformation is equal to the P times the length over AE where in our P that is the actual load the L that is the longitudinal length and A here that is the cross-sectional area or the area perpendicular to the force and E here that is the modulus of elasticity now if we have a varying cross-sectional area so we have to um, compute for the deformation by integration and we have this form that is the integration of the axial force times the dx over the cross-sectional area times the modulus of elasticity from the limit 0 to L. This can be used if you have changing cross-sectional area in every change in length. So you have to come up with um, equation with respect to variable x so that you can use integration. Basically, the deformation for a uniformly a uniform cross-sectional area is PL over A so you can just memorize this formula here and then we have our first example here so we have bar ABCD which has um, bar AB which has a modulus of elasticity of 70 gigapascal since this is 70 so therefore this one is aluminum bar okay this one is aluminum it has a diameter of 20 millimeter and then we have bar BC, which is also 70 gigapascal. So therefore, this one is aluminum as well. And it has a diameter of 24 millimeter. And we have a bar here, the last bar, which has a modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascal and a diameter of 16 millimeter. So therefore, since this one is 200 gigapascal, so this is steel. Okay? So by uh, using this bar here, we have to determine the displacements of B, C, and D relative to and A. Since we are asked to compute for the displacement of B, C, and D relative to and A, so therefore, we let our point A here as fixed. Okay, so this one, we let it as fixed. So therefore, we are not allowing point A to move in any direction. So the only points who will move into this condition is B, C, and D with the application of the force 8 kN at point D, 24 kN at point C, and 20 kN at point B, and lastly we have 4 kN at point A. So again, we are not allowing A to move at any direction. We are only allowing B, C, and D here to move because of the load application so we let a here as fixed since we are computing for the displacement of b c and d relative to a the first thing we do here of course is to compute for the deformation of each segment okay we have three segments here however in order for us to determine the deformation we need to compute first the internal forces in each segment so again i taught you two different approach in computing for the internal forces we can either use cut section or we can use diagram okay but 
to make our solution shorter, we use diagram instead. Okay? So, let's start on the right side since we let A here as fixed. So, we start at point D. So, again, we start on the right side since A here will not move. So, now we have 8 kN here. Now, 8 kN is tension, right? It's tension relative to A. Since 8 kN here is acting on the right side and it is acting tension with respect to our point A. So, therefore, we move to the we move upward in our diagram and we have the value of 8 kN. Okay, so we have 8 kN. Okay, now take note we do not have other forces or other external forces within C and D, correct? So therefore, we are sure that all the internal forces between C and D are 8 kN. Okay, so we have a straight line representing... 8 kN internal forces within C and D. Okay? So, we have 8 kN. Now, at point C, we have 24 kN which is acting thing to the left and it acts as compressive force. If we uh, let our point A here as our reference point. So, again, 24 kN is, is acting as compressive force when we let A here as our reference point, so therefore, we move downward. So, we move downward and the internal force here, so we have um, 8 kN minus 24 kN. So, therefore, we have internal force within B and C, which is equal to 16 kN. And take note, we do not have other force within B and C, so therefore, we are sure that the internal force between B and C are equal. So therefore, this is negative 16 kilonewton. And now, we have 20 kilonewton at point B and 20 kilonewton is acting to the right direction, okay? And it is acting as tensile force relative to point A. So therefore, we move upward. Okay, so we move upward here. So we have here negative 16 plus 20 kilonewton. Then we have our internal force of segment AB, which is equal to 4 kilonewton, and that is positive. So therefore, we are sure that our diagram here falls above our reference line. So therefore, this one here, and we do not have force between A and B, so therefore we are, we have internal force within A, B equal. So this one is 4 kilonewton. Okay? Now, at point A, we have 4 kilonewton which is acting to the left direction and that is acting compression relative to point A. So therefore, we go downward and we fall at 0 or at the reference line which we have value here 0. Again, you can check your diagram if it is correct kung nag-end ka sa zero. Okay? Since this is equilibrium, so therefore, walang excess na forces or walang excess na internal force. So therefore, we have internal forces in each segment. Segment CD, which we have here, 8 kN, which is tension relative to point A. And we also have actual force or internal force in segment BC which is negative 16 kilonewton this one which is compression relative to point A and then lastly we have um, internal force in segment AB which we have here 4 kilonewton which is in tension okay these are the internal forces in each segment respectively so we can now compute for the deformation of each bar, okay, of, of each uh, segment. So let's start with the deformation of AB. We have the deformation is equal to PL over AE. Now the deformation of AB is equal to the actual force acting at AB, segment AB, that is 4 kN. So we compute it as 4,000 newton times 
the length the length of AB that is in 2 meters, so therefore we could say that it's 2,000 millimeter. And we have the area which is pi over 4 times 20 squared, and the unit is millimeter squared, times the modulus of elasticity that is, since we are using aluminum as material, and aluminum has a modulus of elasticity of 70 gigapascal, then we have um, elasticity here that is 70, then we multiply times 10 raised to the 3 to convert it into megapascal. And megapascal is a unit of newton per square millimeter. So the only remaining unit here is millimeter since you could cancel out newton and square millimeter. And the deformation of AB is equal to 0 0.364 millimeter. And since we have tension for um, segment AB, we have tensile force, 4 kN, therefore, the behavior of our segment here is expansion. So we have expansion. Now, for um, the segment BC, we have the actual force that is 16 kN, that is in compression, so we have 16,000, times the length of BC, that is 2,500 mm, over the area, that is pi over 4, and the diameter is 24 squared times we have the material is aluminum that is 70 times 10 raised to the 3. So we have the deformation of BC that is equal to 1.263 millimeter. And since we have compression and the behavior of segment BC here is contraction. Now lastly, we have um, deformation of CD that is we have the actual force that is 8,000, the length of CD that is um, 3,000 millimeter over the area is pi over 4. Then we have the diameter is 16 squared times we have the material is steel. So we have 200 times 10 raised to the 3 as the modulus of elasticity. So we have here the deformation of segment CD that is 0 0.597 millimeter and we know since it is in tension a thousand is in tension therefore it expands and then since we are looking for the movement of b c and d relative to a we have to compute for the movement of b first and since we know that our um, segment a b here expands so therefore, our B here moves away from A, correct? So we can say that the movement of B is equal to the expansion of AB, correct? And our AB here has a deformation of 0 0.364 millimeter. So our B moves 0.364 millimeter to the right okay so it moves away from B by 0 0.364 millimeter now for the movement of C now we know that our AB expands whereas our BC contracts so our C here the movement of C is basically equal to the deformation of AB and the deformation of BC. So, you sum up a deformation of AB and deformation of BC and that would be the movement of C. So, we have here that is just the deformation of AB plus the deformation of BC and this gives us the deformation of AB is equal to 0 0.364 and the deformation of BC, since BC is contraction, we have negative, it is 1.263. So we have here the answer equals to negative 0 0.899 millimeter. The negative um, sign here indicates that our, that our point C here moves closer to A. So therefore, the direction of motion of C is to the, to the left. So our joint C moves closer to A by 0 
and then the movement of d here that is just equivalent to the summation of all the deformation that is the deformation of ab plus the deformation of bc plus the deformation of cd and we have the deformation of ab that is 0 0.364 minus 1.263 and the deformation of CD since we have segment CD that is in expansion that is 0 0.597 so we add the 0 0.597 so therefore the movement of joint D is equal to negative 0 0.302 millimeter again the negative sign here indicates that our joint D moves closer to A so the direction is to the left so these are now the movement of joint B this one is the movement of joint C and this one is the movement of joint D relative to A so these are the final answers